I've been salvaging those cells and those laptop batteries I got, and I've been having a little bit of an issue with testing them. On a side note, I've 3D printed these 18650 holders. I just got this 3D model off Thingiverse, and I'm actually kind of, kind of liking these. They're a good temporary thing, but either way, I've been running into some issues. Well, up until now, I've always had pretty good luck with just bringing all the cells up to 3.6 volts. Like all those cells are up to 3.6 volts. And then I charge them to 4.2 with my IMAX P6. And then I see how many milliamp hours of current it took to charge it up to 4.2 volts. Well, I've had some issues with like, for instance, this cell took 4,500 milliamp hours to charge and only has actually one amp hour of discharge capacity. So it's obviously wasting energy somehow and it's not really that warm either. So it's weird. But now it's gotten me wondering, should I trust just the input current or should I also do like discharge and whatever? But the thing is, once I do discharge and stuff also, it just takes so much time to do this. Then I was running into the issue of my IMAX V6 wasn't ever turning off when it was discharging. It would discharge down to three volts, which is really too low anyway. And then it would just sit pulling like 100 milliamps from it and slowly keep counting it up to where it did try to pull three amp hours from this, but it was at like, it was at an extremely low voltage. And I think it was more of like an issue of where it wasn't actually pulling current, but it detected that it was pulling like 500 or 50 milliamps or 100 milliamps or whatever. So it kept adding that up because the timer wouldn't stop. So this is odd. I'm going to switch it over to the nickel cadmium setting and see if I can do that. Or I might just see about building my own from scratch. That would probably be better. Got some new stuff. A lot of new stuff. Okay. So first off, got this from eBay. Banjo-Kazooie. I've been wanting to play this game for years. Finally got it. It's for the Nintendo 64. I picked up a relay and a large capacitor. Can you guess what I'm going to do with this? I am going to try and make a spot welder so I can tab these batteries. Because instead of soldering them, I can just spot weld them. And I'll probably add a lot more capacitors to it, but I'm thinking this is probably a good start. So 15 millifarad, or I think it's 15,000 microfarads or 15 millifarads, pretty the same thing, and 50 volts DC. And I got the automotive relay to help with controlling it. I know 40 amps is probably too small for it, but whatever, this is at like a dollar and a half at halted. Well then I picked up at halted this switch. It's like a valve type thing. This is a tube, and I'm thinking that this probably goes onto a cylinder because this flipping this doesn't actually turn on or off this valve right here. It still it's air through. So I'm thinking it is supposed to screw onto a cylinder, and when you do this, the pin goes down and opens the valve inside the cylinder. So that's kind of interesting. High pressure valve for only a dollar. I'll take that. I also got this at halted. I've been wanting to build a scanning electron microscope sometime. And I think this would be a perfect thing for the vacuum chamber. This was $15. And I can guarantee you this probably costs a lot more than $15 to machine and to weld. Because look at that awesome weld there. I've been running into some issues of not having any hex keys or Allen wrenches. So I decided to get some. Well, it happened to be one right about when I was thinking about getting some, I saw a friend of mine had these Bond Hus colored ones. And, oh man, they're so tasty looking. It's almost as good as, like, rainbow ribbon cable. It's just so colorful and wonderful. I love it. I would rather take this than just plain old black ones or whatever. So I had to get myself a pair. It was 30 bucks on Amazon. And they came in only a couple days, so it's pretty cool. I'm really happy about this. This is probably going to be my uh, going into like my main toolbox kit because unfortunately now with my trunk my big technician's case does not fit into the trunk anymore. I, I could easily add it on, on the top and strap it on there but I'm thinking about redesigning and making a much smaller toolbox that'll take up less room and the tools that'll be inside of it will be much more thought out and that's what's going to be inside of it or at least one tool. Then the final bit. The most expensive piece here. A JLD 404. This is an amp hour meter. Now this thing can read volts, amps, and amp hours. It'll count up amp hours. So I'm gonna have this on my tricycle, probably like here or so. And it'll, it'll be in a waterproof case. 
I'm gonna have a big dashboard right here with switches and buttons and stuff like that for headlights and all kinds of neat stuff. I might, I might even have a separate meter just to display volts. But either way, this was $60. I know, it's a little bit pricey, but all the other places I saw was like $150. And this is pretty cool. This will count up the amp hours that I use on my battery, or on my motor actually, when I ride. And then whenever I charge, whenever I charge the battery, it'll count back down. So I'll be able to be more mindful of how many amp hours I use. That's pretty cool. I think I think if you just like hold down one of the buttons, it'll just slowly tick through each setting. So it'll show amp hours, current amps, or currently uh, the amount of amps that you're currently drawing, and the volts, and it'll keep keep going between that. So it's pretty nice. I can't wait. But right now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to design or what the shape's going to be for that. And you guys may have also noticed that I now have a bed out here. One of my friends dropped this off. It's a nice cot, and I'm using one of my landlord's sleeping bags. They have a bunch of camping stuff up here, so they let me use that as much as I want. And they gave me a pillow too, and actually gave it to me because they just didn't want it anymore because it was a little, it was getting a little bit old. But it's not really that old. It's like only six months old. But oh well. I think they go through a lot of pillows because they have some people renting here and stuff like that. So they they just bought a lot of pillows and they just switch them out every so often. So it's been a couple days and some interesting things have, have popped up. First off, last night I cleaned out some more room and I opened up this area a little more so I could scoot the bed further back and I'm not having to put it away every night. So that's pretty nice. I have a nice little area to walk around. And oh, what are these? Oh, I wonder. Hmm. Well, I went to Weird Stuff Warehouse and well, remember how I said I was wanting to build an electron microscope? Well, I need a vacuum chamber and damn, they had the exact same thing I needed. This was $20, that was $55. Part of me wishes I hadn't gotten that one, but you know, for $55, I'm making more than enough money and I'm saving $1,000 a month for my rent. So it's like, I can use that for a water chiller or something like that, but this, now, this was a water chiller, actually, so I could use it for the same thing. And this was a large oil filtration system. There's a giant filter in here. It's all oily and stuff. But it's it's not like a nasty oil. It's just like a... It looks like clean oil, so that's good. It's not like engine oil. It's all black and gritty. I'm not entirely sure how I want to mount this system, but I'm thinking sideways would be an interesting way. <coughs> Look at that. For 20 bucks? Hell yeah. And that filter comes out and it'll leave a big open room. So I'm probably going to start a new video series where I start turning this thing into a vacuum chamber. And I'm going to do... I'm, I'm going to be copying a lot off of a really good YouTuber by the name of Ben Krasnow. Uh, he recently changed his YouTube channel to Applied Science, but you should watch all his videos. Free shout out. It, it, he's a really good person. He's a really good channel. Really awesome stuff. He made a scanning electron microscope a while back, and I'm wanting to do it also. But I don't have stuff like a diffusion pump and stuff like that, so I'm just going to focus on doing some other interesting stuff before then, and slowly upgrading this system until we work up to doing that. Maybe I can make a mass spectrometer someday. Who knows? On, on second thought, I think I am kind of happy that I got this because it has a lot of valves and useful stuff that I can, I can if I need a valve for this, I can move it over and put it onto here. So I have a good resource. And I'm thinking that I probably will have to have chilled water for something, like maybe for cooling a, a part that gets hot or something like that. So I'm thinking about using that. So that'd be pretty cool. I'm not quite sure what this is. It might be a large Peltier cooler, you know, like a big cylindrical one. I don't know. Weird. I also picked up a bunch of these for a dollar. Picked up about six of them. And I have them over here. So I have like metal parts. I have electronic parts and tools. Oh, and as for this thing, I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this broken PSI gauge and I'm going to replace this over it to where I just have a rubber gasket right here. And I just set that on top of it. Of course, it'll be down here, not actually on the meter. And this is where I can route any wires into the vacuum chamber without having to drill holes into it. Now, I am kind of afraid 
that this container couldn't handle couldn't handle the stress of a vacuum but to be honest it's probably strong enough because i assume that this chamber is probably at about this thick and since it's cylindrical and stuff like that it probably should be fine but it just to be safe once i first pull a vacuum on it of course i'll have to get a vacuum pump i'll just get a cheap harbor freight one for for a starter i'll pull a vacuum on it outside so if it crumples up we can just have a neat video about it outside and it won't break anything and it'll just be 20 bucks that'll be all so i think that'd be pretty fun well that's a lot of stuff i wasn't expecting that project to grow that quickly i don't know for some reason it's i've been wanting this stuff for years but but since i i found it and i wasn't like exactly ready to buy it now i've, I've been like oh my god my i'm so messy i gotta clean stuff up so i like went through and cleaned a bunch of stuff and threw some extra stuff away which is probably a good idea because i just threw away extra stuff that i didn't need like old washers that i found on the side of the road and i organized a little more but yeah it, it's just funny that I, that I'm used to things going at a slow rate, and I wasn't expecting this project to be really going that fast. So I was expecting me to have my tricycle done by then, but wow, this is pretty cool. So, I'd like your guys' opinion on what would be a good use for this, aside from also having parts coming out of it and stuff like that. And which orientation should I have for this? Should I have it long ways, so like it would be a rack that I would, uh, that I have like, I would slide in there? Or should it be upright like this? Or should it be upside down to where this is like a shell, like a big metal bell that goes down on around whatever I have? You know, like I, I, I set this stuff up to be stationary and I put that over like a big vacuum bell. Who knows? I'm thinking at first though, I just have it upright. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. See ya!